you arrive in style, plopping into the cold waters of the late Cretaceous, no guidance, no parents, just open ocean and instinct. And already you're confused. Why? Because your body's massive, but your brain? About the size of a walnut. Good luck, because unlike normal reptiles, you're born in the water, but can't breathe underwater. You need to surface for air. Quickly, or your new life ends before it even begins. You're a marine reptile, not a dinosaur. In fact, you're more closely related to modern lizards than anything like T. rex. You belong to a weird family tree called plesiosaurs, famous for doing one thing terribly, having the longest neck of any creature in the ocean. That neck? It's 23 feet long. You've got 72 vertebrae, which is more than most snakes. It's like dragging a garden hose behind you at all times. Graceful? Maybe? Efficient? Absolutely not. You paddle awkwardly with four flippers, kind of like a penguin having a panic attack. But you're built for it. Your body is torpedo-shaped, your bones are light, and your movement is... Let's call it elegant-ish. Still, you've got one goal right now. Survive. You're barely three feet long, more noodle than hunter. You're surrounded by predators. Sharks, baby mosasaurs, and even older cannibalistic plesiosaurs. And your only defense is your ability to disappear into the blue. But that's not easy. You're built long, not fast. That neck is basically a neon eat-me sign waving through the water. Any fast-moving predator could snap your neck like a breadstick. So you do what you can. Drift low, stay quiet, and wait for the right time to eat. You sneak up on soft-bodied animals like squid or fish. But you've got a problem. Your tiny head is perched on this absurdly long neck. Which means aiming is hard. You have to swing that neck like a whip, and by the time your mouth gets there, your target's already gone. You miss, constantly. Your brain is screaming, eat that fish, but your body's like, on it. In five seconds, even when you land a bite, you don't chew. You just grab, gulp, and hope your teeth hold long enough to finish the job. Eventually, you start getting better. You stop chasing fast prey and go for the lazy ones. The sick fish, the slow squid, the distracted ammonites. It's not glamorous. It's survival. Time passes. You grow. Three feet becomes ten. Ten becomes twenty. Your body fills out and your neck starts to feel less like a punishment and more like a maybe useful tool. But then you hit another problem. Physics. Your neck isn't flexible. It's not like a snake, more like a semi-rigid tube that barely bends. So if something attacks your tail, you can't turn fast enough to even see it. Your field of view is garbage. Your blind spots are enormous. And in the prehistoric ocean, not seeing death coming is a pretty big issue. You adapt, slowly. You start hunting in the open ocean using your long neck to poke through schools of fish while keeping your bulky body hidden in the shadows. This works, kind of. Until the mosasaurs show up. They're the apex predators now, massive, serpentine, and way faster than you. They don't swim. They torpedo through the water with their shark-like tails. And their bite? Powerful enough to snap your neck in one hit. So you vanish. You start diving deeper, hugging the sea floor, even hiding in coral reefs. And that brings its own issue. Pressure. Your lungs aren't built for deep diving. You're an air breather. So now you're playing a game of underwater chicken. Dive deeper to hide, but make it back before you pass out. Your life is a balancing act. And now you're old enough for the next chapter. Mating. There's no courtship, no dates, just pheromones in the water, and a frenzied scramble of flippers and scales. You flash your brightest pigments, maybe some turquoise, maybe reds, 
and you hope someone notices. And they do, but so do your rivals. Suddenly, you're not just hunting and hiding, you're fighting. They ram, bite, and whip their tails to push you out of the breeding zone. Most of the time, you back down. But once in a while, you stand your ground. You've won. You've earned the right to mate. And for the next few days, you do. One female, then another, then another, maybe five total, maybe ten. Depends on how long you can hold your ground. You pass on your genes. You don't stick around. You drift for weeks. You grow even larger. Now over 40 feet long, nearly the size of a bus. You're armored in thick scales, powered by four flippers, and hungry all the time. But food is getting scarce. Too many predators, not enough prey. And you start pushing your range. Until one day, you go too far. Hunting is different now. You're not nibbling fish anymore. You're taking on bigger prey. You ambush other plesiosaurs when they're not looking. And when the opportunity arises, you go full cannibal. Your double hinged jaws open wide, ridiculously wide, almost unhinged. You lunge, clamp down, and your double rows of backward facing teeth trap prey like a fish in a zipper bag. It's not just about hunger now, it's about territory. Everything that moves is either food or competition. One day, curiosity betrays you. You spot movement near the shoreline. A hadrosaur, duck build, awkward, probably just looking for seaweed. You creep closer, you lunge, you bite. It tastes like wet chicken. You thrash it around, satisfied. But you've made a mistake. You've gotten too close to land. And your body, sleek and powerful in deep water, becomes a liability in the shallows. A sudden wave pulls you in. You try to backpedal with your flippers, but the current slams you into rocks. Your neck tangles in the kelp. You can't turn. You can't escape. The tide goes out. The water leaves you behind. You're stuck, massive, stranded, helpless. You inhale. Nothing. Your lungs burn. Your flippers twitch. But it's too late. And in your final moments, as the ocean retreats and the sky grows quiet, you realize something. You were never the apex, just a long-necked oddity clinging to survival in a sea full of monsters. Turns out, being the weirdest swimmer in the Cretaceous has a lot of downsides. It's long, it's awkward, and sometimes it just plain sucks.